I think at this point it would make sense to describe and illustrate what subspace is and what it isn't. This is a crude description of space. All space in the universe contains matter and radiation. There are no exceptions. However rarefied, all space is a potential expression of pressure. Attempting to empty rarefied pressure produces temporary virtual particles ghosts that come into existence and then disappear. Hollow is defined as a space with nothing in it, except, of course, space. Empty is a more descriptive word for subspace, in that it can describe a volume with no space in it. A volume of subspace contains no time, no temperature, no radiation, no matter, no virtual particles. Subspace cavities cannot be directly observed. It is only by virtue of the gravitational implosion of space and the consequent energy that is emitted that allow us to determine the existence of subspace. This implosion has a violence equal to the initial creation of subspace. So we're talking e equals mc square annihilation events here. And that's a pretty good description of our sun. Now, maintaining that gravity-inducing subspace exists could easily be dismissed as wild speculation, the feverish imaginings of an overactive mind. For this reason, I have devised a rudimentary sketch of a laboratory experiment that contests presently accepted electromagnetic gravitational dogma. A search through years of scientific journals and the web in general, suggests that no attempt to date has been made to discern if gravitational induction is present at the moment of electrical discharge. I suspect there are two reasons for this. The first reason is due to the assumptions made of the behavior of electromagnetism by Hans Christian Ørsted in 1824, the basic tenets of which have not been revised or revisited in a contemporary setting. Ørsted and his successors simply did not have the tools sensitive enough to discern any weak interaction between the electromagnetic and gravity. The second reason is simply that it has not occurred to anyone to pursue this avenue because of the presumption of present electromagnetic dogma, which has been reinforced by almost 200 years of assumption. Fortunately, with the contemporary tools now available, it is possible to determine photon trajectory, and so this is fertile ground for laboratory experimentation. With the advent of a new generation of lasers that have the precision capacity of 1 times 10 to the minus 15 centimeters, and the now available highly sensitive interferometers, the experiment has more than a good chance of yielding a result that can determine one way or another if subspace exists. According to present theory, photons are not responsive to electromagnetic fields. Only gravity can alter the path of an unobstructed photon. Consequently, a laser beam of photons passing an electrical discharge and arriving at an interferometer is expected to denote no deviation caused by the discharge. This is an untested assumption. I propose that the interplay of electrons and protons in a magnetically organized plasma, such as one sees in lightning, produce momentary filaments of subspace. At the moment of their existence, these subspace filaments induce gravity without a corresponding quantity of mass. The rapid contraction and accompanying thunderclap at the collapse of a lightning discharge is, at its root, an induced gravitational event. So in our experiment, as the photons from the laser beam pass an artificially powerful induced electrical discharge, such as a Z-pinch, the photon path will be slightly diverted by the momentarily gravitational induction caused by subspace, and their arrival at the interferometer target will denote this. 
When one discounts the gravitational presence of the electron-proton mass that makes up the actual plasma discharge, there will be a further photon deviation that this mass cannot be accounted for, leaving little doubt that there is a gravitationally induced deviation of the photon. The experiment is repeatable and will confirm the observation.